Here, let me, this is the first time I've seen the poster. It's actually. great. Thanks. I love it. It's such a powerful movie, by the way. Thank you. Um, Tish, you, I saw you went to Tish. Yeah, went yeah. Tish. Yeah? Yes. Nice. I when did. were you there? I graduated 2005, I believe. Yes. Oh, yeah, it was 2006. Oh, we were probably... Were, were you in film? or Yeah, was, film. Who, who did you study with? Oh, so I had Kelly Reichardt was one of my teachers. Antonio Monda. Oh, I love him. I love him, too. I Have you forced, talked to him or what? Not recently, but I keep in contact with him. I forced him to make me his, like, assistant. Like, yeah. I wasn't getting credit. Antonio Monda's amazing. I wasn't even getting credit anymore because I took his uh, classes too much. Yeah. But he was like, oh, my gosh, I love him. I love he's a, He's great. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Great. I thought it was so interesting that you, because you wrote and directed it, mm -hmm. that you wrote a film where the main character is a young woman. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just kind of, cause, and it, you did it very well, which I don't, Thank I you. think sometimes, oh, sometimes men, like sometimes I'll see a female around me, eh, it doesn't quite resonate, but you did, it's hard to write, I think, a female in that sort of age group, and you did it really well, you know, she's, and very vulnerably. What made you want to choose her as your like main character? Uh, I mean, it sounds it sounds odd, but I didn't, I didn't I don't feel like I selected or chose her in a way. I think it was actually kind of quite the opposite, which is different than what it happens for most most projects that I've I've written or most most things that I've pursued. You might start out with the germ or something that you're trying to convey, but with this, it was actually <coughs> excuse me some introduction to to Katie herself. Again, it sounds it sounds so sort of like hippy dippy type thing, but yeah. it's just. I had an image of a young woman walking down a highway, and I could tell that she was a waitress from her uniform. I could also tell that her name was Katie from her name tag. Um, and my mind usually just doesn't work like that. It usually doesn't work in the actual visuals. It usually works in the, in the written word. Um, so it was a unique situation with, with this particular film. So it wasn't as though I was going out to make a, a film or to tell a story about hope. It was actually just sort of this character came and then she communicated her story through me. And I just try to remove myself from the, the process as much as possible. It's written beautifully. Uh, Thanks. I was curious too, because it takes place in this like little town, I guess in Arizona, is mm -hmm. that, which it, it's its own like microcosm. Oh, I can't speak. Um, it's definitely its own little world. It kind of feels very claustrophobic in a way to me. Yeah, completely. What made you want to kind of go in that setting? Have you, it, have you like spent time in Arizona or was, well, in a way, I have spent time. I wouldn't say that as a like as a fully formed human. I spent a year there, a year and a half there as a child of like three to to four or something like that. Um, I mean, I've spent time in the area as well, but also like when that first image hit with Katie, I could also tell that she was in the Southwest. So it wasn't something that I yeah I decided myself. I feel like it was just something that was given to me with that that imagery, and I just followed it and I just didn't question it and just allowed it to it. flow out. I love that. You kind of do have to like. I think writing, you just have to like trust it. Sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. So if you can find the right wavelength, yeah. it's nice where it just sort of pours out. If you're struggling, if you're just if you're trying to convey something that's like your own sort of personal yeah. motive, then, then I think that's when it becomes much more clunky. But it's yeah, because this was very like no, it all felt really natural. Nothing yet felt contrived about it at all. Nice. And it is interesting because it's in such an open area, but it does feel so claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. It's that. And scary, like, I, like every scene, I was like scared of that. Uh, I'm like, don't go near anybody in this town. Just yeah. Out there. But um, oh god, it was like, but um, it's I just totally lost what I was gonna say. I'm so sorry. That's well for the small town thing too. I mean, in this, obviously, I'm not a, a young woman, um, but I, I do personally have an understanding of a small town setting as well too, because I grew up in a small town myself. Oh, okay. certainly not along the lines of how small the town is that, that is Katie there. lives in, but um, still a, a quite small town that is claustrophobic. I mean, there's no way out in the town that I grew up in. It's just you're literally landlocked, and you, the only way to get out is by by plane or by boat. So, oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's really. <laughs> that's so really you can't hit the road as a what Katie has yeah, done. Like yeah. She's able to I mean, throw. There's something about that setting that I, it really is like appealing to me, and it, it's filmed really beautifully too. I was I'm not sure your cinematographer is um, by name, but there's something kind of, kind of in the vein of like Badlands, like mm. in the, I don't know something about the dusty kind of that goes really well with this story because it is such a intense like character piece. Mm -hmm. um, how do you even like, uh, work with like the actors or go part like casting? Because the, the the cast is very strong throughout the whole film. Like, thank you. Gently, 
you she? I mean, come on. It's like everybody in it. And, yeah. And they're and it's all different roles than I've ever seen them in. Like Mary, I haven't seen her in a role like that. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to cast yeah. against type, and it's nice yeah. to sort of take if there is a pre-existing image for an individual to sort of go against that and sort of buck the system in some way because it makes it that much more interesting. But you also have um, artists such as themselves that are also trying to show that they that they're not locked in, that they can do other things as well too. Um, which we were fortunate for us. We had, we had a couple of instances of that in, in this particular film. Um, but they all wanted to play their parts too. It was by no means a, a money-making venture for, for any of them. And it was actually quite the opposite. So it was a story and there were roles that uh, just resonated with, with our talent, with our, with our artists. And I love that they're different kind of roles. Because I mean, that is a big problem in like the bigger movies. Like they're all like, oh, 20 year old. Mm. girls but this is like of all ages like mm -hmm. oh, like um and um really different so i could see how that script would resonate with actors and want to be a part of it which is why i love indie filmmaking too because it's like people passionate about it it's not because it's like a yes exactly yeah and you could feel that like come through the yeah. performances yeah i think when you find people that are doing work for paychecks it's just it's not going to lead to anything good no. and it just becomes work it doesn't yeah. become a passion and yeah. that's Bullshit. If we're, if we're lucky enough to be doing what we're doing, then it should be just purely about the passion. And these supplemental stuff just doesn't matter at all. I totally agree with you. And it, you can feel it through the, I mean, I can feel it always through the screen. Even in smaller movies, I feel like, oh, this person just did this, get paid. And it's mm -hmm. like, this person just wrote this because it's like this movie. And mm -hmm. you could, yeah. I think audiences could feel, I mean, well, we can. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Audience. I don't know if the majority of audiences can feel it because they're soaking that shit up and they're just, they're. Fill the theaters, and they're they're causing they're fueling that machine. So it is depressing, but hopefully it's just a trend that's going to sort of quiet in a bit. But I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what will happen. But I'm grateful that you make work with this, and there are people passionate about film and writing, and obviously have appreciate for the history of it. So there, there are good films out there. Yeah. Who are some of like your inspirations? I'm just curious. As if, like, what made you even want to go into film? Um, I well, I mean, I wanted to go into film since I was nine, um, and I was interested in film before then too. But it was just something clicked at the age of nine, in which it was just clear this is what I wanted to do, and this is what I was going to dedicate myself to. Um, I mean, Pasolini is is a is an inspiration as well. Um, I love his film Mamma Roma. I think it's fantastic. So I like good. it was totally different than, than Katie, but I also love Pecking Paw. I think Pecking Paw is fantastic as well. So um, I know they read it Dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't I didn't even I didn't even see it. No, either, um, I didn't know. like I can't. But that, that's that's one of the most perfect films. Eat to Mama Tambien is a very, very important film for me as well too. Um, I don't know, there's a there's a number, but it's never like a, a blockbuster type film. It's usually yeah. a smaller film that is purely about the characters and it's about emotion. I don't give it. I don't care about being entertained at all. I feel like I can entertain myself yeah. really at any time. And if I'm going to watch a film, if I'm going to dedicate two hours to something, then I want to be emotionally challenged or intellectually challenged. And to be entertained is just like in the very, very back seat. It's, it's at the bottom of the rank on my end. Um, so the inspirations or the influences that I have are usually. I, I don't think it's bigger films. Um, at all. I don't think there's a big film on that. Actually, no, I take that back. Heaven's Gate. Oh, I love, I love that film. Tony wrote to favorite. Exactly, I know. <laughs> I know, there's a reason, but everybody right. hates that film. I know, but and I, I love it Yeah, too. it's fantastic. It it's fantastic. The film. Deer Hunter is also great, too, yeah. but yeah. Ivy Deloney is a favorite of mine. Um, totally small film. Yeah. Um, but yeah. When I watch a film, I, I don't like looking it up beforehand because I mm. like to go in blind and just like make my own opinion. So I was really like blown away when I saw this because from the get go, it draws you in this small town and these really complex relationships. And there are some very difficult scenes in it. I mean, how, how do you um, navigate those as a director or do you have like conversations with this is the core here, just yeah, we. I mean, we have lots of conversations, and it's the. I mean, for for of course all the scenes. Some scenes are going to be easier than others, but for the scenes that you're talking about, we naturally have conversations about it. If they sign up for the project too, we yeah. we have to be of the same. Oh yeah, they have to be like mindset that. and the same opinion. And if we're not, if there's a sort of if there's a deviation of some sort, it's just simply not going to work. So everybody understood and had the same philosophy in terms of the subject matter that we're tackling. 
and of course we all want to do it in the most sensitive and, and respectful way possible. So it was never going to be exploitative, it was supposed to be, um, but at the same time, we weren't going to shy away from it. Yeah. If you shy away from it, if you don't allow the audience to actually experience the emotions behind that, then you can actually make potentially a positive difference in terms of the audience. And so we had to to go through the experiences that Katie went through um, and the other characters as well so that there is a possibility to evoke some sort of change. If we if we avoid the scenes that you're talking about, then it's just... No, I think it would be a different movie. Like it would It's a completely different movie, and it's not, it's not going to have the potential to actually affect a, an individual that's actually capable of, of wronging somebody and, um, and doing these horrific acts. I think, I mean, there was a, there was a moment in which we had a screening with a, a high school class and I was actually very nervous about this. Like, this is probably not appropriate. But then when I saw the reactions in the young men that actually has watched the film, like, even if it... I think, it, yeah, I think it's like a, like a good thing. Like, I think it's so too, yeah. yeah, because I don't think there's an understanding of... What? Of, yeah. And the way you filmed it, it's very, very powerful and very Thanks. emotional, but not ex exploitative at all. Yeah, it really didn't feel that way at all. It, it just, it was very, it was very emotional, and I mean, all those, everyone in it was so great. Thanks. I really hated Dirk. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I have such, such great respect for oh, Chris God. for taking on that role because oh, he is so, so inherently sweet and just such a, a, yeah. a gentleman. Um, but he really allowed himself to go there to like a very, very dark place. And probably a gruesome sort of hatred from people that just can't shake that character away. So it takes a great deal of bravery and courage on his part. Oh, and absolutely. And apparently, like, the, like somebody, you know, like, no one's going to, like, yes. <laughs> like, if someone does, there's a little something wrong with that. Yeah. Um, but what do you hope, yeah, like, completely. Uh, people walk away from? With it? Um, I mean, I hope that they're going to walk away with, uh, well, there's a number of different things, but I primarily I hope that they walk away with greater determination and courage to actually construct the life that they want to live yeah. and to actually pursue the dreams as Katie does because Katie's lot in life is so much yeah. worse for compared to most of the people particularly the people that will see a film like this and yet so many of us don't actually pursue what we want to do in life um, but if we watch this young woman of 17 actually overcome all these insane obstacles and still pursue her dream regardless of the things that have happened then hopefully it will act as she will act as an inspiration of some sort for us to go off and do the same. Um, there's also the intent, too, that if there is somebody that has gone through a similar situation to what Katie has, that you actually see somebody overcome such. And it doesn't become a revenge film. It doesn't become hyper-violent. It's actually somebody that's able to um, recollect themselves after a horrific event like that and not allow themselves to be defined by such. Yeah, you're right. It, it, that alone is, like, super powerful. Um, but it, it really, because there is like when you pursue something you want, no matter what it is, like she wants to go to beauty school. Mm -hmm. To say that it's like a very, okay, you go to beauty school. To her, it's not such an easy thing yeah. to do, but um, there is a leap of faith and you mm -hmm. just have to be fearless. And, you know, there's always someone that has it better and always someone that has it worse. Like, yeah. Like, so you just, you just got to keep going. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. There's no point yeah. on sitting down and wallowing or just and not get, yeah. picking yourself back up and moving on. You have to continue to push forward. It's kind of a good allegory for filmmaking, I think, because like there are so many people I feel that don't ever they'll talk about it, talk about it, talk mm. about it, and then never do anything. Because, oh yeah, I can't stand that. Yeah. It's, it'll, Eventually, I just tell them to be quiet. Like if you're not actually going to do, do it, do it. stop wasting the time. Like you're just taking up all this real it's estate. It's a rampant and, kind of thing in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. But you really have to just kind of do it. Like at one point, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to do it, and that has to be your mindset, no matter what happens. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think, I think people just need to shut up and just actually do, yeah. complete the work. 